I'm here with Terry Rasmussen, who's uh, in the top 1% of uh, realtors nationwide, amazing agent, uh, and he's been around for a long time. We've been around the business, I think, about the same time. Yeah, about 28 years. Yeah, 28 years. Um, so if you like this video, visit us at eRealEstateCoach.com for more. We'll have a ton there, but let's get right into it. Terry, you built a, uh, since we've met, you've built a team over the last few years. Yes. And, um, you know, what, why, first of all? Why build a team? A lot of people ask me that, should I build a team? Why did you build one? Uh, because you only have so many hours that you can spend in the business a day. Right. And um, if you're building your business consistently, and the one thing that I learned years ago is something is either growing or it's dying. There is no stagnation point. There's no in between. So your business is either growing and you're or you're dying. And I, I didn't want to die, so I decided better grow. <laughs> and uh, so I've worked to, to grow my business and um, bring, my goal is always to bring the best customer service I can. I don't want to be another real estate agent. In fact, I, a lot of times when I'm talking to my clients, I tell them, I don't want to be your real estate agent. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people um, get, a lot of agents I think get stuck in the idea that they're taking a listing and that, that they're just being a real estate agent. Yeah. Well, actually what we are is we're a top-notch marketing firm. Mm -hmm. And what we're marketing is real estate. Mm -hmm. And I like to talk about how uh, Campbell soup. They put a can of soup on the on the shelf. Uh -huh. They spend a lot of time to to sh to shoot good quality pictures of it, to make sure the price point is right, to know their customer base and and get get it set on the shelf just right. Good good placement. And if we're going to do that with a can of soup, a company's going to do that with a can of soup. What should we be doing for homes? Right. You know, the largest investment. So I don't see myself as just a real estate agent, a real estate broker. I see myself as a marketing company. You're not an order taker, you're a marketer. That's right, and my job is to do the best job I can for my client to expose their home to the broad market. Mm -hmm. And then in the process of that, getting that good exposure, when, when the offers come in, to negotiate then the best price. So I'm not just a marketing guy, yeah, yeah. and I'm not just a real estate broker, now I have to be this top-notch experienced negotiator, consultant, negotiator. problem solver, mm -hmm. not only understanding, which is hard to do sometimes, what the other client is trying to accomplish, mm -hmm. but trying to also understand what my client wants to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Because understanding their goals is, is as important as anything that's in the contract that you're negotiating. Absolutely. If you don't understand what the goal of your client is, it doesn't matter what's in the paper, you may miss it. Yeah. You may get a contract together and miss your client's goals. Doesn't hit. So, so at some point you got so busy because obviously you're passionate and you got a great story right. to tell, you know what you're doing. You got busy and then you Building decided, the business. I can't handle all these leads, is that what happened? Right. Couldn't handle the leads. So um, uh, I was looking for uh, a broker to work with. I had my assistant uh, Janelle working for a while, mm -hmm. but she was too busy and she says I can't do Too that well, part of it, yeah. so I had to find somebody, and I brought Sue Sparrow on, mm -hmm. and um, she began running with online leads mm -hmm. that I had coming in through Zillow and Realtor.com and other sources, and um, she went from struggling in the business to making a living in the business, right. and she was quite happy with that, but there were still, uh, I felt like a lot of leads falling through the cracks, and uh, my son decided he was going to get in the business, and I said, well... It just so happens there's room for you. There you go. So my son Austin came on, and um, he's been, uh, he set some goals. He came on January of last year, so about 13, 14 months ago. He had set some initial goals. He knew he needed to set some goals. Well, he blew through those through in, by summertime. Wow. And um, he was, you know, very happy with it. So this year he set his goals. He said, I'm right. setting some crazy goals. <laughs> good. And uh, it's really good, and he's, he's doing real well as well. And, so, and they run with the online leads Primarily, although there's uh, some referral business that I can't handle, and then I'll also refer that over as well. Mm -hmm. So, well, we were talking uh, with your assistant before we started shooting, and mm -hmm. it was an interesting conversation about a lot of, I think, team leaders attempt to have their admin also be a buyer's agent, and you tried that for about a year, uh, but she was just so busy with your transactions, she had to stick with that. Um, and have you found that to be a better separation? It is a better separation because um, what she does is she keeps the three of us that are working with the clients straight. Mm -hmm. what, we are, what we are freed up to do because of the work that Janelle does is we can focus on our clients yeah, yeah. And, and focus on uh, getting listings in and getting sales going and um, those types of things uh, and not be bogged down by the paperwork mm -hmm. and the, the manual tasks that um, typically in the business you'll have agents who will sell two or three houses 
and then they'll coast and they'll go, oh, the pipeline's empty, I gotta work again. And their business goes up and down and up and down. It's because they get caught up with those three transactions, managing those three transactions, that they forget that what they need to do is still generate leads, generate, yeah. still take listings, still make sales. And what Janelle does is free us up to to do the most valuable task, which is be in front of clients. The sales funnel. It's, it's the most important thing that we can do is be talking to clients, being in front of clients, and um, generating business. Absolutely. And then, you know, the escrow work, the setting of appointments for uh, inspections, uh, constant communication with clients and stuff like that. Not that I don't communicate with clients. Uh, I'm communicating with my clients all the way through the escrow period as well, mm -hmm. but not on every single thing that has to happen. Right, not every you know, it's more like a, a, a once or twice a week I'll make contact with a client, mm -hmm. but but not on a daily or, or multiple times a day as things are going on. That's where Janelle steps in and she's really uh, taking the, the day to day tasks. So one interesting thing we're talking about your schedule, and I'm always curious about people that are at the top of the game like you are in their schedule. I know you, you're, you're an early riser, you get to the office relatively early compared to a lot of agents, um, but we're talking about whether you are in control of your schedule or your assistant is, you still can maintain control, but yes. you allow her to add things into your schedule. She can add, you know, if, if uh, somebody walks in, needs something, you know, you know what, your clients will a lot, all, quite often just walk into your office and say, hey, it's time to list yeah, my house or mm -hmm. I need to buy a house. Or they call in, or for whatever reason, Janelle ends up with with a lead. She can throw things into my schedule, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and then you have a time of the day that you you prefer. I mean, obviously we got to bend and twist, but you have a time of the day that you like to work in, and when you're working with clients, what time of day is that? Between ten and two. Why? Uh, it's when my most my highest energy. Your sharpest. I'm sharpest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of agents don't even think about when am I sharpest? When is my best time to meet with clients? And am I scheduling to that? Which I think is an interesting thing. Yeah, I mean, by, by 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> now, I may not be able to get it, and I may have a 4 o'clock listing appointment. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. You know, I, I have one, I think, tomorrow. tomorrow. So um, those, those appointments do come, mm -hmm. and, and you have to do it. And sometimes you're out there in the evening. Yeah. But um, I really work to, and, and this is part of the experience of being in the business almost 30 years, you learn to schedule your stuff so that they're not owning you seven days a week. Right, right. So, you know, night and day and that kind of stuff. I'm in a business. Attorneys don't work weekends and evenings, <laughs> right. you know, very often. Exactly. And so um, it's, it's treating your business like a business rather than treating yourself like a slave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taking yeah. control. Taking control. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Terry. Great interview. Appreciate all the insights. You bet.